Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Each Sunday I post a video and this could either be a real-time demo, it could be a tutorial, it could be a plein air adventure, or sometimes a combination of all three. I paint quite a wide range of subjects including animals, landscapes and portraits, and I use a reasonably wide range of media as well, including conventional acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, pencil, biro, alcohol markers, sharpie markers, and sometimes I just combine all of these. I did a loose and very simple preliminary drawing with blue watercolour marker pen. And then you can see I've just laid in a sky and a very simplified landscape, working wet in wet to create soft edges. I've used a one inch flat brush designed for acrylic here. This is actually a brand new brush and it puts down lovely marks. I quite often use fray brushes, frayed brushes for texture, but um, a brand new brush is also pretty cool. I've got some burnt umber, cad yellow light, cerulean blue, permanent alizarin and tinting white. These are the interactive acrylics and I'm going to work on the main animal now. So, you know, obviously these sheep have a very fluffy, long fleece, long haired fleece. So before I get into all of that texture, you know, which is great, I want to just create some kind of form. So in other words, I'm going to kind of forget that the sheep has a fleece at all. And I'm going to simply model the, the lumps and bumps, as it were. So there's some of my burnt umber. We'll put a little bit of the cerulean blue in there. And a little bit of the permanent alizarin. And then just a light misting of water. And then squinting at my reference, I'm looking for the very dark shadows. Now, as I apply the paint, I will keep in mind the general direction in which the fleece is kind of flowing, but I don't need to be overly careful at this stage. I really just want to map out in a very simple way areas of light and dark. So the majority of the chest is quite dark. It's also dark down here underneath and that extends a little bit onto the top of the more distant foreleg. Just going to mix up a bit more of that same colour. So burnt umber, touch of silurian, and a little bit of the alizarin. So I'm not drenching the, um, the paper in water or anything, but I am just you know, keeping it a little bit damp. Just helps the paint flow. That creates nice textures especially when you're using a flat brush like this. And the kind of broken brush strokes that I get automatically, that's going to help automatically create some of the texture that I'll you know, add to later. Now, I'm going to have to put in some even darker shadows, but we've got a reasonable start. So within the, um, the fleece, there's kind of a purpley hue in places as well. So I'm going to grab some more of the blue 
and I'm mixing that into what's left of the paint I had on the palette there, the mixture that I had before. I'll grab a little bit of the alizarin and that's hopefully going to be fairly close and we'll see what that looks like when we put it down on the painting. And of course, I'm going to be getting some automatic blending between the color that I'm putting down now and uh, the color that I put down a little bit earlier. But of course, that's kind of a good thing because um, there aren't going to be hard boundaries between one color of the fleece and another. Now, as we move up onto the top of the back here, it's kind of a similar purpley color. So I'm just going to grab a bit more of the blue and a bit more of the alizarin and mix that in. Let's get a bit more of the blue in there. But things get a little bit lighter when we go up to the back. So I've just added a bit of the tinting white. Now, there are oranges within this fleece as well, um, but we'll come to that uh, a little bit later. So let's see what this looks like. So that's not a bad start, but it's a little dark. But I can use some of that up here near the head. So let's get a bit more of the tinting white mixed in there. Now you can see I've given a similar treatment to the animal in the right hand corner of the painting. But the highlights on this animal are kind of more of an orange. So I've, I've mixed up some of the cadmium yellow and some of the crimson. And I'm going to drag some of that through the still wet paint. And then also apply it to the areas that I haven't actually touched yet. And, you know, I can I can take a little bit of artistic license as well uh, if I want to. But let's add a little bit of the tinting white. And that's that's probably enough for that fleece for now. So I'm going to let those areas of the painting dry. OK, well, um, that first application of paint is dry. I've got some nice textures, some nice kind of blending of colors. I want to work on the heads of the two main animals now, and I'll probably put a bit of paint on the on the legs here of the left hand animal. So let's begin by taking some of the tinting white. I've switched to a smaller brush. And I hadn't realized, but there must have been a bit of burnt umber mixed in with that white. But we'll we'll make use of that. I'm going to scrape most of it off the brush and hopefully pick up some clean white there. And uh, but we'll just grab a little bit of that and off the brown and put a little bit of the cerulean blue in and once again i just lightly missed the surface of the paper with water And that's actually quite a nice colour. I quite like that and the fact the browns are mixing in a little bit. So 
So again, I'm keeping in mind the direction of contours of the surface of the head, but also I'm looking, you know, really just at my drawing as well, because I want to get the head, you know, as close to correct as possible. So I'm making a little correction to the line of the top of the head there. But on the whole, things don't look too bad. The shape of this ear could do with being corrected a touch. Same with that ear, just change that slightly. OK, so we've got a, a head locked in with a reasonable mid-tone. So what I'm going to do now is take a little bit more of that blue and mix that in. We'll pick up a little bit of that pale brown that I accidentally created a second ago. I'm going to take just a touch of the alizarin. So I've got a very pale, very bluey violet. And then squinting at my reference, just thinking about the biggest shapes, not worrying about detail, I'm going to darken certain areas. Now, the inside of the ears are very dark, but I'm not going to be worrying about that just yet. So I'm picking out little shapes of shadow that I see and I am enhancing those shadows as well. Um, it generally helps to just exaggerate things a little bit compared to what you see in your reference. I mean, you don't, you don't want to take it to the levels of caricature necessarily, but um, we're trying to create an illusion of something three dimensional on a two dimensional surface. So in general, just strengthening the shadows a little bit beyond what they are usually helps with creating that illusion. May as well just darken that right eye as well. Obviously, I'm going to come in and uh, paint those properly with a smaller brush at some point. But uh... OK, so we've added the first layer of shadow. Actually, there's a bit of mist up here. And then I think we can afford to go darker again. So let's take a little bit more of the blue. Get a bit more of that and a bit more of the alizarin and a bit more blue now because we've gone a bit too far to the side of the red and that's again I think that's another good place to start and I'd completely forgotten that I was going to paint in these legs so we'll have to do that in a slightly different way in a moment but uh, let's carry on with the head so there is within this shadow here to the left of the mouth there's a slightly darker bit and on the chin there's a darker bit there it's dark around the nose here again i'll come in later with a, a small round brush or a little filbert and do that a bit more precisely but uh, we can still darken the ears and that ear as well and the eyes put a 
bit of that dark color there as well now let's have a look at the um the legs so because i've got a darker color on my brush i'm going to put the shadow areas in first so we can just put in a little bit of shadow there and this back leg i can put mostly in shadow and then what i'll do is switch to my uh, reference for the other animal and when it comes to the head on this animal we'll go sort of darker to lighter because i've kind of been forced into that so and i'll have to do the same with the legs here so i've got this dark color on the brush so let's put some dark shadow in there there's a little dark patch for that eye there's some shadow on the left side of the face We'll darken there for that ear. Dark around the chin and part of the nose. And then I'll scrape most of that paint off the brush. And uh, we'll pick up some of that white so we've got a paler color than before still not quite light enough let's get a bit more white that's not too far out Now I will be adding highlights to the heads of both of these animals, but for now uh, that's okay. And then I can use this. Oh, actually that's still quite a dark color, isn't it? I thought it was lighter than that. So let's get a bit more white and we'll just fill in the lower part of that leg there. And I could really also do with putting in a bit of a leg here on the bit of a rear leg on that right hand animal. So the next thing I want to do is put some darker, deeper shadows in on this first animal. I've added some cobalt blue to my palette. So I'm going to take some of that and mix in some of the alizarin. And we'll take a little bit of burnt umber as well. And again, that's a good, you know, not, perhaps not quite as dark as I'd like to go eventually, but... Um, we're going in the right direction. So once again, I'm going to work on a wet surface and put some water into the palette as well to keep the paint nice and fluid. And again, I can now look, got a small, you know, sticking with the smaller brush, I've got a little bit more control in terms of defining outlines than I had with the larger brush. And I can start to add in a few kind of wispy bits coming off the edge of the fleece here. So the front of the chest is really quite dark, even darker really than I'm painting it at the moment. But it may be that I find that this will be dark enough for my painting. We'll have to, you know, we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. And, you know, at this stage, I can start to look a little bit more at kind of some of the shapes within the fleece. So the wool is kind of bunching into sort of almost triangular shapes um, within that shadow. And I'm not going to try and copy, you know, all of those, but putting a a couple in here here and there as I have here so I get those sort of pointed triangles sticking out from the silhouette that's all going to help create the illusion that we've got wool here 
Now, when I come up nearer the top of the head here, there's an area of dark shadow down there. And then there's kind of a line of shadow curving down that way. And then there's a bit of a highlight and then it, things get darker again. And then there's another sort of highlight around about there. I haven't put it in quite the right place, but it's it's OK. So. Things are fairly dark over this way. Now, it may look like on camera that I'm just completely covering the first coat of paint that I put down, but that's not actually the case, because when this dries back, some of that will show through this relatively translucent layer of paint that I'm putting on. Plus, I will be leaving little gaps, so some of it will show through. Now, if I just wet the surface of the paper again on this highlight area, what I want to do is just drag the tips of the bristles across there just to add a little bit of dark texture without completely killing that highlight. And then putting in this darker colour nearer to some of the light colour that I put down earlier is going to have the effect of brightening that up somewhat. I will be adding brighter highlights later. Again, we'll just put a few little texture marks in that highlight I've got there on the back. That's probably enough of that colour for the moment. Now, what I can do next is switch back over to this animal and see if there's anywhere I can apply that same colour. And I think there is. Um, certainly on this side of the head, it's pretty dark. Now, actually, my paint's running out a little bit, so I'm just going to grab some more of the cobalt blue, some of the crimson, some of the burnt umber again. And it's probably going to be a slightly different colour. But we're in the same ballpark, so. So there's a dark, darker area of shadow there. In under the. The chin. Extending down the front of the chest. Now, I'm particularly keen to keep some of the texture I've automatically created with that first coat of paint. So I'm just going to apply this colour somewhat sparingly. hopefully just add just enough to help describe the rounded nature of the back there. So I think I'm going to leave uh, this this one pretty much as is for the moment. So we'll head back over to the main animal and I want to add some more reddish tones to the fleece. So I've added quite a lot of alizarin crimson to that colour that I've got mixed up already. I'm just sort of thoroughly mixing that in with what was left on the palette. And we'll see what that looks like when we put it down. So in particular up here, there are some just very subtle reddish hues. That's working quite well, I think. And then it also down here there are some as well. But within that there are also things which are a lot more towards the orangey brown. So I've just added some cadmium yellow light.
Now that's not quite orangey enough, but um, it's quite a good colour to add, I think. So we'll we'll keep going with that. We'll add a few frayed bits onto the underside of the belly. Let's get a bit more of that yellow into the mix. And a little bit more, perhaps. Now, I think I've probably gone a bit too far towards the yellow, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll pop it in and see what it looks like. Oh, it's not too bad. So there's still some sort of detailed shadow and detailed highlights to add to that fleece. But for now, I'm going to return to the head and add the beginnings of some highlights to the head. Because really all I did before was block in a mid-tone and add some fairly gentle shadows. So I'm picking up some pure tinting white. I'm just going to take a little touch of that um, orangey brown that I mixed up before. And that's not something I normally do, actually. I don't normally put brown into my white highlights. So this is pretty much an experiment to see how well it works. And we're about to find out. And it's, yeah, it's not quite light enough, but I don't actually dislike the effect. So... We'll keep going with that for now. So again, it's fairly subtle at the moment. Not very bright. And then I can come over here and do something similar on the right hand animal. And then we'll get a lot more tinting white on the brush. Go back to the first one. And again, I'm not getting too fussy with uh, the shapes I'm putting down. I'm still sticking to the, you know, if not the large shapes, the medium sized shapes. because I'll come in in just a little bit with a much smaller brush. And then we'll put a bit of this lighter color on the front of that leg as well. Well, next I've switched to a little filbert brush and I've mixed up some burnt umber with a pretty good amount of the alizarin crimson and a touch of the cobalt blue. And I'm gonna use this now. I'm applying the paint more thickly but still onto a damp surface. And I'm going to use this now to begin to put in some of the very dark shadows. Now, the reason for working on a wet surface, as I have been pretty much throughout, is that it automatically gives you a textured brush stroke. So you get lots of little subtle variations in color and tone, especially if you're painting onto a still wet layer of paint as I am at the moment and um, that helps to create some of the texture that animals have you know across their bodies and uh, in their fur and, and wool and so on 
so as you can see I've just darkened the ears so now moving over to the eye we can begin to put a much darker uh, shape in for the eye and again I'll come in with a much smaller brush later on to um, just needed to lift off a little bit there which went wayward um, to, to really refine the shape but the main thing I've done there is I've put a curved edge to the shape there and then it's almost a little V on the other two then we can do a similar job over here so we want a curve coming over the top then it's quite a sharp angle in the corner of the eye and for now that should suffice that started to put the eyes into the head in a fairly believable way and now we can move down to the nostrils so the right nostril is shaped a little bit like that that's not quite right but it'll do there's a little line there and then there's sort of a brown bit which goes down there at an angle and then the other nostril is a different shape and a little bit more open it looks like so I didn't really capture the difference between the two nostrils there but so let's just put a little bit more in there it's not quite right but again for now it's okay and then now for the actual line of the mouth I'm going to leave that for the moment that's really quite a fine line but I'll do a similar treatment on this head and I'll check back in with you in just a second well as you can see I've added some darker shadows to the right hand head as well um, I'm going to go back to this one here I'm going to take some of the alizarin crimson and mix that in with that orangey brown that I had um, I don't know how well you can see that um, that I had earlier pick up some of the white and I'm going to continue to mix some white in just to get a sort of pale pinkish I guess it's a pale off pink really let's give that a go and uh, it's not too bad and then there isn't really anywhere else I can you know justifiably use that color but I'm going to put a little bit in on the ears and then just a touch on this animal as well and now I'm going to switch to a round brush and we'll uh, actually no I'm not what I'm going to do next is add some really bright highlights to the, uh, the head of this animal so I'm continuing with my filbert brush but I've now switched to titanium white which is more opaque than the tinting white that I've been using to date so we'll begin by adding a highlight line which starts off fairly narrow along the top of this ear and then becomes a little broader and triangular at the top of the ear there then we'll leave a little bit of a gap and we'll put a bit of a highlight on the top of the head and this is also an opportunity for me to just reshape the top of the head a little bit and also it allows me to basically remove some of that blue outline that I had there before so then we come down over here and I can add just a couple of wispy bits coming off and another little highlight line over the top of the ear and then there's a much narrower highlight on the bottom of the ear here
and during my painting of the fleece, I, or maybe it was always wrong, the line of the head actually comes down here a little more. And then kind of bows out a little bit. So even at this relatively late stage in proceedings, I can make corrections to my drawing or correct things that got lost in the painting process. So I'm, again, I'm looking at shapes, really. So as I work my way around the head, I'm kind of squinting at my reference and just seeing, well, where can I add? Where are the brightest areas and what shape are those brightest areas? So that's not too bad. I'm going to put a lick of uh, white on the f just at the front of the four leg there as well which i just realized i made too wide so we'll remove part of that with my thumb So sticking with the filbert, I've mixed up a mixture of the burnt umber, the crimson and the cobalt blue. And this has given me a you know nice dark colour. And I'm going to use that to just put in some even darker shadows. But I'm going to be careful to not you know, just put in a solid block of shadow. So I want a sort of patchwork of randomly directed marks so that some of that underlying work I've done shows through. So that even within the, the darkest depths of this painting, when it comes to the fleece, there's a texture and a multitude of colour, subtle though it may be. Um, it'll still be there.
and I can even do a little bit of drawing at this late stage in proceedings. So I can sort of add a wispy line. Let's just get a bit of uh, just a touch of water to uh, get the paint flowing a little better than it is. So we'll come back to the fleece in a bit, but um, I need to make some adjustments to the head. So I've switched to a small round and I'm just grabbing some titanium white and mixing in a little bit of the cobalt blue. Because in my reference, the, the head of the sheep is against a relatively darker background, whereas mine's against a very pale background. And because of that, the sort of definition of the head is getting lost a little bit. So um, I'm going to refine the shape of the ears as well because they're a little out, not quite where they should be in terms of uh, shape. And, you know, just darkening some of these shadows on the ears as well will also help to um, make the head stand out in the way that it should. So just that little adjustment has helped quite a bit, I feel. Um, I'm just going to mix a little bit more white in and just break up some of that sort of rather halo-like outline that I've put in. And then we can move on to the eyes next, I think. So I've switched to a mixture of cobalt blue alizarin crimson and burnt umber and I'm going to use this to put in a little dark line there another one there and then I'm going to refine the outline and position of this eye on the left a little bit so And we'll do something similar for the other eye as well. And that same color can be used, I think, for the um, for the nostrils too. And then, as you can see, I'm just adding that sort of seam that's in the upper lip. And I can put the line of the mouth in as well. Yeah. 
And then back to this blue color I used, but I've added a little bit of the alizarin. So I can use that to just refine the shape around the, the jaw. And some of these patches of shadow I'll probably soften the edges of at some point. But, you know, for now, I just want to get the structure better defined than I had it previously. So hopefully what we're starting to do is bring the, some of the character and expression in this animal's face to life a little bit. And going back to the pure blue version of that um, colour, I can put a little highlight in that eye and then a smaller one in on the right hand eye. And then a mix of um, alizarin crimson and yellow added to some of that blue to give me kind of quite a deep orangey brown just for the lower part of that left hand eye. The right hand eye, I think I can leave as it is. And then we'll mix that in with some of the burnt umber that I've still got on my palette. And some of that can be used in here. To add some different colored shadows to the ear. And then I'm going to go uh, more towards the purples. Just grabbing some more blue. Bear with me a moment. We'll put some of that in there. So that little brush stroke went a bit wayward, but um, I think I can live with that for now. And I think what I'm actually going to do is with a little bit of artistic license, I'm just going to start to put a few little gentle outlines in around the head with this color. But what I'll do is I'll just use, I won't, you know, I'm not going to just put a, a purple halo around the head because I don't think that would help matters very much. Just a few little dots here and there. A few little wisps and lines just to help pick out the top of the head from the background. So I've added a few little extra touches to the head, um, just refined the drawing a little bit more. Um, so now I've gone back to my smaller flat brush and I'm going to use some of that pale purple for some of the fleece. Now that's not quite light enough, so I'm mixing in some of the titanium white. There we go, that's a bit more like it. So we've begun to introduce some of that lighter colour, which is on the back of this particular animal. And 
and I'm just going to mix that in with a little bit of the uh, cobalt blue. And I'll use some of that in here. Whoops, that's a little bit too light. Let's see if we can get a bit more of my other blue in there. The cerulean. Well, it's still a little bit lighter than I intended, but I, I don't mind it actually. I think I think it works quite well. So we'll put a little touch there. And uh, I'll actually pop some of this in up here on the top of the back. I quite like the way that's working. So sometimes, you know, when I'm painting, obviously I'm inspired by my reference, but sometimes you just try something and you think, oh, I think I quite like the way that looks on the paper. Um, so in my experience, it's usually worth going with that. Uh, I will just put a little lick of blue on that foreleg down there as well which is just about off screen for you, but hopefully you saw me do that. Let me just adjust the, there we go, the camera angle. And then I've mixed up um, an orange next with some of the cad yellow light and some of the alizarin crimson. And just like I put a few flecks of the blue in, I'm going to put a few flecks of this orange in. I'll put a few of those along the top of the back as well, just to help define the, the line of the back. I'm still keeping in mind the direction and shape of my brush strokes because, um, you know, this late stage you don't want to sort of undo too much of what you've done. That's probably enough of the orange. Now, with this particular painting, I actually ended up making quite a few extra adjustments after I finished filming. So the first thing is you can see this distant animal. I've just uh, filled in the silhouette with a very light layer of pale brown. So I went slightly lighter to begin with, and then on the lower half of the animal, slightly darker, just to give the impression of light falling on the animal. And then there's a little bit of a cast shadow, which is just the same color as the shadow, ca uh, shadow color there. So the whole point of this animal is really to give a sense of depth to the painting. The right hand sheet, I hardly did anything to at all, um, except for the head, which I did, you know, make several minor adjustments to and just improved the modeling. I added a little bit of color down here and down here and under the the chin but apart from that the fleece remains you know completely untouched compared to what you saw so we've got a highly simplified treatment here off in the distance we've got a pretty well resolved head here and then for the fleece we've got was it maybe two layers of paint so it's still a fairly simple treatment so very simple treatment slightly more involved and then as we come to the main animal, I made quite a few adjustments to the shape of the head uh, because I felt I hadn't got that quite right, basically. Um, I enhanced the outline work, but I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but I've got a blue outline, an orange, blue, purple, a uh, little bit, you know, a couple of dots here of different colours, orange, purple, orange, purple. So the outline changes colour as you go round. And the idea there is that, well, first of all, it's just more interesting visually, but it helps avoid that kind of just solid line you get in kind of comic book art, which isn't what I'm, you know, that's not what I'm after. Um, I also improved the, the kind of the modeling and the shape of the jaw and trimmed the side of the head here and here a little bit. So I feel that kind of makes for a much better sheep head. And then really for the fleece, the only other thing I did was with a liner brush, I put in just a few 
well, quite a few actually, but just fine lines of different colors. I just wanted to add more color to this brown fleece. And the main thing I want to kind of uh, inform you about here is that if you're having a go at doing that yourself, then in the light areas, you can have quite bright kind of wispy lines. But if you want to add them in the shadows, um, as I've done here, then although on camera they look quite bright, these wispy lines are in fact much darker than the wispy lines in the light areas. So if you're adding little bits of detail to your shadows, you still need to keep them very subdued. Well, that's that painting finished. Uh, Herdwick sheep, multitude of colours in the brown wool. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.